Let's learn how to knit our ends into the fabric with all of our marled projects. So this is gonna come in handy for a lot of my sweaters like Marled the Mania sweater, the Rain or Shine sweater, and all these marled shawls. I have the Melting Marl shawl is a really good one. And this is the new Marled Thundercloud. So look at the backside of this. Would you believe that I didn't weave in any ends and I don't have to? I mean, it, does this scare some of you? I feel like some of you are running away from your computer right now and like hiding in your stash room. So I use so many colors. There's probably like two or 300 ends because I change colors so frequently, but I knit the ends into the fabric. So I don't weave them in. I just knit them in and then I'm just gonna trim them and I'm done, okay? I didn't use a tapestry needle at all. So you can make these huge, blended, melting marl fabrics with no tapestry needle. You just knit the ends in. So I'm gonna show you how to do that so you can fearlessly paint with all of your yarn to knit these marled projects. Let's marl and change some colors. I'm using these two colors together, but I wanna drop one color and add a new color for the fading marl technique. So these are my current two colors that I have attached right here. And when you're changing colors, you can do it at the beginning of the row or round. But if it's at the beginning of a row, I like to work the edge stitch first. Or if you have I-cord, then work your three I-cord stitches first with your existing colors. And then take the new color, and this is really simple. Just hold that new color together with the old two and just knit all three together. So this is really easy. This is honestly what I do for all my marled projects. Just knit the ends into the fabric. Do this for about eight stitches or so, maybe 10 to be safe, but about that much, that's plenty. And then just break the old color. So this is my old color, and then just like break it right there. And it's done. And you can keep on going with the two strands held together. So this is how I knit my ends into the fabric for marled knitting. It's gonna mean that some of the stitches at the beginning are a little thicker than the rest of the fabric, but you don't really notice. So I did that for all of my color changes. And can you tell exactly which stitches are that triple thick strand? I don't think so. It's all marled knitting, which disguises the fabric and the colors. So this is what the wrong side looks like. So when you have your yarns, you can just snip them, but never snip them too close to the fabric. Not right there. I snip them about right there. You could do that as you knit or at the end of your project. Just snip, 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 and you don't have to weave them in because they're knitted into the fabric. The fabric is like a net trapping all those yarn tails. So you'll notice that I had a tail of yarn from the beginning, when you add a new color, you also have that new tail of yarn. So the next time you work your row, you could take that new tail of yarn and also knit it together with the other two colors until that tail runs out. But let me show you one more option. So we're knitting the ends into the fabric. Let's say we want to add a new color. Let's do dark gray. So I'm going to do an even, even lazier method where when you're changing colors, I don't even do it at the beginning of the row. I do it like in the middle of my row or when I'm a quarter of the way through my row, just anywhere. You can take that new color. So these are the two attached. I'm going to take this new strand of dark gray. And you don't have to leave a long tail when you change in the middle of your row. So just leave a little tail. That's fine and knit all three strands together for about eight stitches or so, and then break the color that you don't wanna work with anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of that one, and then keep on going with just your new two strands with the new combination, and then that's all there is to it. So again, I changed in the middle of my row and you can't really tell because the point of marling is to mix all the colors, especially with this fading marl technique where you're changing one color at a time. And then look at the wrong side. This was that color that I just introduced. And then this was the tail of yarn that I broke, that I stopped. 
And because I did that like in the middle of my row, I can just snip, snip, and that's done. So just knit the ends. That's my favorite way to work in for marled knitting, knitting in the ends. And my favorite way to do it is like randomly anywhere in the row. So you can see on the wrong side with all my color changes, do you see I did it here? I just started this new color right there. And here was one. Sometimes I did it at the beginning of the row, but if you always change colors quickly in the exact same spot, then you might notice, maybe you'll notice depending on your fabric and yarns, maybe it's a little thicker if you always change colors in the exact same spot. So if you do it kind of randomly, oh, I did one all the way at the end of the row too. Look at that. So it's totally fine. Just knit them together for about eight stitches or so. And then when you're done, all you have to do is snip your yarn tails. Isn't this so much quicker and so much more fun than having to take all of these yarn tails at the end of your project and weave them in? So when I'm done with this, I'm working on the Marled, uh, Marled Thundercloud shawl. When I'm done with this shawl, I'm only gonna have to weave in like a couple ends from the beginnings of my sections. But all the ends from these color changes are just quickly knitted into the fabric. Just add the new color, three strands together for about eight stitches, snip and go. So I hope that was helpful and uh, makes your marled color knitting much easier and more fuss free. Well, I hope you loved that trick. That's just one way to work your ends into the fabric. If you wanna use the Weave in Steven, I'll put a link to that tutorial down below. That's another way to work in your ends without weaving in ends. And uh, if you liked that trick, I showed a lot more like marling techniques and some other fun ideas in my Color Play the Westnitz Way workshop. So at westnitz.com, we have a whole workshop all about how to mix and marl colors, how to plan your colors to make these beautiful light to dark sequences. So there's a lot of fun inspiration and techniques in that marling workshop at westnitz.com. So I'll put all of those links in the description box down below so you can expand your technique repertoire and yeah, be a super pro knitter and make all these fearless, colorful paintings. So I just love that knitting in the ends trick. So I'll give it a try and don't be scared of using a hundred colors in one project and changing colors all the time. Nothing to be scared about. It's just yarn, it's just ends. Knit them in and then snip them, knit and snip, and then enjoy all those beautiful painterly colors.